It started with a simple question. How do we understand the relationship between violence and justice in a democracy? In the first six months of 2018, we logged 382 incidents of collective public violence. Most of those killed were Muslims, transgendered, the abjectly poor, women and the mentally ill. What does this violence say about the Indian Republic? Are we still a republic if those who experience this violence seldom get justice? For the past year, a team of researchers, lawyers, political scientists, together at the Polis Project, have been building one of the most extensive data sets on collective public violence and justice in India. Our data set records acts of mob-based violence, lynchings, massacres, pogroms and gang rapes, and traces how these acts proceed through the justice system. Acts of political violence are linked to larger social, economic and political forces. To understand the recent spike in violence, we need to understand how this violence is made possible. How do we study mob-based violence? Mob violence is not spontaneous. It is almost always planned. It is used as a tool to threaten, discipline and punish minority communities or other groups that are considered different. It is always done by turning the civilian, the citizen and your neighbours into killers. So how do we turn people into killers? By teaching them to hate. And this hate is nurtured as a political project. When we first started asking these questions, we soon found out that there is either no data or the data collected was deeply problematic. What data do we collect? We collect information about perpetrators and victims, the identity of the perpetrators, when, where and how did the attack take place, the type and nature of violence. We record if Section 144 was implemented. Did the presence of police increase or decrease the violence? What happens after the violence? Was there an investigation, arrest, a commission report? If so, what was the outcome? Were the perpetrators convicted? If so, what was the sentence? And was the sentence proportionate to the crime? Did the religion, caste and class of the perpetrator and victim affect the outcome? Finally, we try to find out if individuals and communities who were affected by this violence get justice. Now, all of this sounds really, really hard. So how do we do this? We have a team of 10 female research assistants who go over every single day of the newspaper since 2000 and quote this violence based on our codebook. This work is not for the faint-hearted. It requires immense discipline and persistence. This is hard, grueling and emotionally taxing archival work. And these young women are nothing short of remarkable in their commitment to understanding and taking a stand against violence. Our data tells a story of a society where violence is no longer an aberration. It has become an inexplicable part of our existence. We have done this work for the past year without any institutional, political or private funding. We are non-partisan. That is, we neither politically or ideologically support any of the political parties in India. Our only commitment and responsibility is to the citizen. We want to make sure that this information reaches the public before the next elections. An informed citizen is the last defence against the violent onslaught of hate and bigotry. Support our work and you can learn more about the Polish Project and our violence lab here.